glory. Praise the Lord. How many of you have to have God to do something today that's, that's completely out of sight that only God can do? Let me see your hand. I know you're here. It's why the Lord anointed me with this message today. And the devil tried so hard to keep us from it. Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. You can do anything, Lord. Anything but fail. You've never failed us, God. Help us to enter into it, Lord, right, we pray. And do something, Lord, that's so completely out of sight that we'll say we never saw it done like that before. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, God. Thank you uh, around the world. Out on Facebook. Up on the hill today, they're listening. And I know they're there because I've heard your testimonies this week from the staff who's called you. And I heard you say we're worshiping up in the parking lot. I don't care where you're worshiping. Right here in this gigantic auditorium. I'm so glad we built it bigger now so we can have more people now. Before long, we're going to fill all the way up again, over and abundant. You watch. It's coming, folks. The Lord wanted me to tell you, don't you be afraid of COVID-19. Okay, he's got it all under control. Hallelujah. We've got some that are suffering from it today. I know we have. But I am not afraid of you. God has got us under cover. And God's got you covered by the blood. You'll see when you hear me preach today, I think. At the end, we're going to pray for the sick. We're going to pray for your need. And I'm going to give you a list of people that we're going to pray for today. Here's the scripture that God gave me to give to you. And I know you say, well, you keep saying God gave it. And it's the truth. Chapter 8 of Matthew. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou made whole, be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy was cleansed. I want you to be seated. Thank you. We have done everything we can in the church to keep people from believing in miracles. We've excused it. We've outplanned him, outpromoted him, outsung him, outpreached him, outtaught him, outexcused him, saved his face, done everything we can to make people think. It's just not God's will to heal. But I'm here to tell you today, and you know it now, if I were lying here on a cot with my back broken, I would still look out at you and point the microphone and my finger and say, it's God's will to heal you. God wants to heal you. God hasn't got any problem at all. We've got the problem. There's no problem with the power of God. The problem is with the church, with us, with his pastors, 
with its leaders. That man, when Jesus came out of the mountains, knew that God was able to do it. But he had one problem. The problem was not his sincerity or his adoration or his worship. No, it wasn't his importunity where he'd come and said, please, God. The problem lay in us in saying, can he do it? The man had one thing that he had to overcome. He believed that he could. I'm going to play on the verbs now. But he wasn't sure that he would. And there's a big difference. And therein is where your problem and mine lie most times. He's like many of us. We have everything about him. Lord, I know God can do anything. The only thing we've got is, Lord, will you do it? And it is for that reason that those two words are powerfully put in this scripture. And Jesus said, I will heal you. I will cleanse you. You can note whether he said cleanse or healing. It was a cleansing because of leprosy. But it was a healing also. Healing will come because it is a part of salvation. You say, wait a minute now. I didn't learn that in my catechism. They never taught me that when I learned it in my church. Oh, wonderful. But did you get it all? Who said you got all of it then? Because there are some things that we have definitely left out. We have everything going for us today except the faith to believe that he will do it. And we've got our excuses. Well, he might do it. He's just liable to do it. He could do it. But will you do it? That healing that came as a part of salvation is something that we have a problem with. But honestly, we have no problem with the salvation. And I want to quote John G. Lake again, who saw many, many healings in his lifetime in the States, in Canada, in Africa. He said, we have no problem with somebody getting saved. But we do have the problem with somebody getting healed. Think with me just a moment. Here come two people down the aisle right now. Come on down, it's fine. One wants to be saved, and the other one wants to be healed. Kneel in the altar right here. And we go to the brother who wants to be saved first. And we say to the congregation, how many of you believe that God will save this man? And every last one of you will say, I do. Because you have, along with the church, gone into the graduate school, the postgraduates of high school and college, of the salvation message. Oh, we believe, Lord, that you will save. And all the power that it takes and the faith that it takes to be saved. And so we cry and we give them handkerchiefs and everything and we say, take him in. Oh, Lord, thank you. I believe he's saved. I'm just giving you things that people have spoken to me about. And we believe he's saved. And then, oh, oh, there's someone else here. He's come to get healed. How many of you, well, he can. 
I, I, I believe he can, Pastor. I believe he might. I believe he could. But I don't know if he would. And so we have made excuses for God regarding that part of the salvation message. For God came to give every bit of it to us, not one more than the other. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You know the song. You know 103rd Psalm, don't you? And verse 2. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. And forget not all of his benefits. For you have healed us of all of our diseases and cleansed us from all of our sins. And we get to all of our sins and we say, oh, all of our sins. But all of our diseases, I don't know if you would. You could if you would. And we bring on the problem to show that we are not in the high school. We are not even hardly in elementary with our healing. We're down in the lower kindergarten when it comes to healing. And there are a few of you who believe, a few in the church today who believe that God can do anything. And we glibly sing it. My God can do anything. Only believe all things are possible. I want to get it into your spirit, into your soul, so that you can see it and, and understand it. Now, watch what Jesus does. Jesus sees through, and I read a long dissertation by a very educated man in a very educated church, the Church of the Great God. That was the name of it. They put out pamphlets for you to read, and we read those. And he said that he was really worshipful. He was really, uh, had all those things. But the thing the man left out was the thing that Jesus saw about the man. Jesus saw his faith. You said, you can't do that. Yes, you can. You can't see something that ain't or that isn't. Yes, you can. For faith is a substance of things hoped for. I said substance, and a substance is a thing, if I'm not mistaken. But you can't see it, Pastor. You don't know it. It's running through the building right now. Let me challenge you about electricity. You can't see electricity that comes from over at PWC. But if I handed you a one of those lights and turned it out like this and screwed it out and plugged it in and I would say to you now how many of you can see it oh I can't see it I can't see it but is it a thing it is a thing and you will find out that it is a thing even though you can't see it it's invisible you plug your finger in it and you are going to let the hair on your head stand up straight and if you're standing in water it's goodbye We'll send you a flower. Just one rose will do. Can't see it? Because it is in the unseen world. And this is what the church is so afraid of getting into, the unseen world. i got to see it to believe it. You've got the Thomas spirit. Yeah, you better watch out, John. They're going to they're gonna pin me up in the corner. Go ahead and hit me. It's not me. I'm not trying to save face. I'm only giving what he went through. He saw their faith, the man's faith. And he is able to look through everything that you've got, every physical thing, your yacht, your house, your cars, your clothes, everything. He's able to see through all of that thing that you see, that you and I are so adept at seeing. Got that old eye on you, boy, I watch it, I see about you. He can see all the way through that and look into the unseen world and see faith and know that it is a substance of things hoped for and it is an evidence of things that are not seen. And that's what you've got to have and that's what this man had. He had the faith. 
He just didn't know if God would. I know he could, but I don't know if he will. Jesus spoke to him. These have got to be your two words and mine. I will, and he touched him, and he was cleansed from his leprosy. Well, I, I tell you now, I, I was reading from my old friend from the, uh, from the Moody Bible Institute who was Scottish. His son came and helped us raise the money to build this sanctuary right here. I met him in California. He was from Colorado Springs. And Herb Lockyer came to help us, led us in Catch the Vision. You recall that. Got it all printed, did everything for us, stayed over a week or so and helped us. And, and, and then Herb, 20, 30 years later, went and died because he was already old then. He was about 100 when he died, and at 100 he was still going to the Holy Land. Well, his father was even greater than that. He was a professor at Moody Bible Institute. And he wrote all the women of the Bible, all the men of the Bible, all the works of the Bible, all the parables of the Bible, all the miracles of the Bible. And I took it out to reread it. It's hard reading at first. But I found what Dr. Lockyer Sr. said. He said, from the very beginning, when God gave us this thing called salvation, he gave it to us along, healing along with the salvation, not only for your soul, but for your body. You see, I, I don't understand that now, John. That's because you are seeing in the upper world and you're not seeing into the unseen world. He said, the reason we are, are overlooking it now, he said, we, we did it, and the church did it. He pinned it and went right on down to the 2nd century, the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th, 10th, 12th, 14th, and got to a 100 and some years ago in our church. I can show it to you. I'd love to show it to you, but I don't want to bring the book like that and hold it up. You'll think I don't know anything, okay? He said, up until a 100 some years ago, we believed it in the church. We preached it in the church. When a preacher stepped out to preach, they laid hands on the sick. They didn't have medicine like we have today. They had to depend upon God. You don't have to depend upon God as much. He said, and when we got to that point, we started slacking off and saying, well, maybe, maybe, maybe five days a week we need you, maybe four days. And we got down to where the church now has dismissed the miracle working power of God and substituted only the salvation of the soul. It's the greatest miracle of all, the salvation of the soul. I know that. But you can't forget these things you ought to have done and not to have left the others undone, Jesus said. He said, we have, we have gotten to the point we have left that one out. And we do it in a very surreptitious way. That's my word, not his, okay? We sneak it right by you so that you don't even know it hit you. And we've trained our clergy, clergy, did I say that right? Our clergy and our leaders and our healing men to say, Lord, now I pray for you, but Lord, I want to go and make excuses for you right now. And Lord, if you don't do it, Lord, if it be thy will. And John Lake woke me up on this too. And Herbert Lockyer, the Scottish preacher, if it be thy will, and you know that that's the way we pray today. Lord, I'm going to ask you for it, but Lord, I'm going to ask it if it's your will, because I don't want you to get embarrassed, Lord. You are not going to embarrass God. Well, you ought to know, Pastor, if it's the will of God. Yes, you ought to. And everyone in this congregation today should know when it's the will of God and when it's not the will of God. Now, how do you know the will of God? You said, well, we don't have God speaking in words like he used to through the prophets. What are we going to do? So we came around. We said, oh, we've got the word of God. We look at that, and that's what we do. We look at the word of God. And I can prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I were Perry Mason today, I could prove it to you in the court. 
that there is not a single time that I have found in the Holy Scripture when Jesus preached under the anointing of the Holy Spirit that he ever said, I won't. He always said, I will. I've got instance after instance after instance. I've heard it, read it, preached it, taught it, and preached it in my sleep this last week. Look, and he always says, I will. You're just making excuses for him because you're afraid it's not going to happen to you, and you don't want, people, don't want people to think that you're not spiritual or that you're suffering for Jesus and bringing glory to his name. Look, are you still here today? Is anybody still here? Let me, let me hear if you're here. Let me say something. Come on. I'm trying to shock you off your seat. I want you to wake up from where you are and get over what you've been taught. I don't care what degree it was. I don't, I don't care what, the, what kind of preacher it was, what kind of seminary you went to, whatever it was. Listen, I want to get you into the real seminary, and that is the Word of God. What if I gave you another instance? Oh, Matthew chapter 8 is what I gave you, chapter, chapter 8 and 1. But Matthew is replete with it. And so is Mark. Oh, and so is John. And so is the doctor, Luke. And so is Paul. And here's what he says happened in the ninth chapter. I got that one too. Nine. And unto about, listen, I'm kidding, cutting up with you here. And when Jesus departed, two blind men, two blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe you that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, I'm seeing it again, he says, According to your faith. He could see the faith. He knew they had the faith. And he knows when you have the faith and when you don't have the faith or when you have the excuses like I have, we all got them. Now here come those two guys bebopping up the street, down the trail. And they says, yeah, they're leading us around now, but we're going to go. You heard about him? Yeah, I heard about him too. We got nothing to lose. Yeah, but what... What if I'm just not uh, the right kind? What if, what if he does this only for his big contributors? I don't have no money to give to him. What if he does that if your skin is the right color? What if he does that only if you're a member of the big church? What if he does that only if you make excuses like that? And one of them said, but all we can do is just go to him and throw ourselves at him and say, Lord, I believe. Lord, something goes beyond the color. Something goes beyond the money. Something goes beyond the church. Something goes beyond that. And Lord, it is what we have seen you do. And we know that you heal from blind eyes. And they said, yes. And there are two verses of scripture right there that show you what he will do. When you know what God is going to do, your faith is going to mount. Now, it's not going to mount until you get into the Word of God. When you get into the Word of God, you're going to see it grow. It's happening for me the same way, to get in at a deeper depth, okay? Now, you say, gotcha, John. You said it worked for Paul. Yep, that's right. What about that thorn Paul had? Thorn. Mrs. Thorn, hi. Look, Paul said he prayed three times to get over it and it didn't get over. Who said the thorn was a sickness? You've heard everything from Eusebius to, to, to somebody else way back there, John Wesley and all the others talk about what his thorn was. Nobody knows what his thorn was. It could have been a, a mental thing. It could have, I'm saying this, I'm going out on the limb. It could have been an unconscious thing. It could have been a temptation that he had. It could have been anything. What if, you can make it up yourself. You don't know. I'm going to ask him when I get to heaven, what was a thorn? Look, Paul prayed and things happen when people had faith. 
but they're not going to happen for Paul and they're not going to happen for Jesus if you don't have faith. And the only time that he did not do a lot of big miracles was when at his hometown, people said, can't believe him. And because of their unbelief, disbelief, lack of faith, he healed only a few people. When some, that means they didn't want him touching them. Now look, I want to just get you to a point where you will say, Lord, I've got nothing to lose. John, have you ever seen it work for anybody else? Yes, I have. I've seen it work in my own ministry, in my own body. I've seen it work in our family. I, I saw it work for a woman who was about to die. I've told you this before and I'm not gonna tell you the whole story. About to die and one afternoon at Duke University Hospital, when she was dying, D-Y-I, whatever it is, okay? She was dying, and the, and the doctors had called her brothers, and they came up from Irwin or somewhere, done to, to see her die. And I got there. I didn't know that he had said that, but I went there and stood over her, and her belly was this big. And she had ovarian cancer, and some of you are medical. There's not much you can do when it reaches that stage, you know? Especially when Duke University says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And I just said, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus. I had no idea what would happen. I want you to know that the next, that night, when I was so later, the doctor came, told her brothers who had gotten there then, have you ever seen a miracle? They said, no, man. Man, these guys were big guys. They looked like football players on the Lions or the Cleveland Browns. And he said, well, go inside. You see a miracle happening. She's standing up at the mirror, combing her hair, getting ready. And they said, what are you doing? She said, I'm going home. And she went home, went to their home on Andover Road here, 234, I think it is. She went there and stayed a year and never died from cancer, but she had a heart attack and died later on. Now, when God gets ready for you to go, sooner or later, everybody's going. But I just don't want to go before my time. And you can say, oh, I, I just am so jealous. Look at her in that casket. I wish I would. Don't you go telling lies like that or you wouldn't be taking, taking uh, Tylenol and, and, and cancer medicine and everything else. You got a, something on the inside of you that wants you wants to live. I want to live. Come on, say it. I want to live. I want to live free so that when I go to heaven, I want to go to heaven healthy. Hallelujah. I hope I'm making just a little bit of sense. Now, you've got a chance to have Christ coming into your life and to do something for you because all of the promises of God are no, oh no. All the promises of God are yes. I gotta hear you preach, you need to say something. Yes, and I didn't hear you. Amen. Amen. The devil hates your guts. When you get to this point that you're right on the, you're right on the edge of it right now. Some of you are wanting to believe, but you're saying, if it be that way, oh Lord. Now I want to tell you all this. Okay, this is staff, the rest of you, drummer boy, sir, prayed so many prayers for you in the middle of the night, in the daytime. I want you to know that, Steve. I want you to clap your hands and praise the Lord for him being able to be back here. I want you to know that if any of you ever come to my house or to the hospital and get down over my bed and listen, Chuck, you're in charge of this one, and ever get there and get around my bed and say, oh God, Pastor John, Lord, it's very sick, Lord. If it be thy will, if you do that, I'm going to rise up and I'm going to give you a haymaker. <laughs> Don't you dare say that. I know it's the will of God. If I were on a cot right here, I'd say it's God's will to heal you. You and I are just so, so careless about it and we want to make excuses for God. We do that about witnessing and everything else, but especially when it comes to healing. You say, well, what if I don't? You're not. <laughs> if you start that what if I don't stuff, you're not going to get anything. You want to stay in the word of God as long as you can, as much as you can. And when 
the time comes and you fill yourself with the word of God, God will give a miracle. You say, what have you got to prove that with? I only interpret with the Bible. You notice that I don't interpret with a lot of other preachers and all that. They don't know as much as any of us know sometimes. Now look, that's why I don't quote them. I want to quote the Bible. Uh, Barn and Paul are heading down to Lystra. Paul says, so Barney, I'm, uh, Barnabas, I, I'm going to, they're sent by the church. Sent by the church, remember that. They didn't go on their own hiking down there. The church sent them. And at Lystra, day one passes. You think they just went through and said, hey, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, amen, see you. They didn't do that. Get the offering first, excuse me. They preached a couple of hours, three hours sometimes, long. And then day two went by, day 10 went by. And after a certain time, Paul preached, he perceived, uh-oh, he perceived. What do you perceive? Is perceive a mental thing? It is, isn't it? He perceived in his brain right here that the man sitting out there that was crippled for 14, I think that's the one, years, could be healed, wanted to be healed. He saw it arise in him. Now here it is, looking into, understand now, looking into, once again, the unseen. If you're just looking at me and looking at the scene, you know, it's okay, but if you want to go spiritual, you got to start looking into the netherworld, into the unseen world, into the world of angels, into the worlds of the spirit. It's there, folks. Listen, it's in this building today. It's a socket ready to go off if you plug into it. Look, get God. And Paul saw. Sir, I see that you want to be healed. He knew he was crippled. What kind of question is that? Stand up on your feet, sir. And the man stood and leaped and shouted for the first time in his life, whatever it was. He was lame and now he's able to dance and sing. Happened with Peter and John. Happened with Philip, he was a deacon it, over in Samaria and over in in uh, Gaza, look, folks, you don't know what God can do in your witnessing until you allow God to use you. Do all you can to witness and share the power and the word of God. Please do everything you can. And sometimes if you reach a point, use words. You gotta understand what I'm saying. There comes a time when you gotta go into action. And when you go into action, something is definitely gonna happen. Now, I really have about another hour of preparation, but put it on freeze. It'll come at another time. But I am going to preach healing to you because God spoke to me and said, I want you in this vicinity right here I want you to preach healing for the rest of your ministry. Who am I to argue? I can preach other things too, but I'm going to preach healing. Roll them up out there and we pray for them. Get them on the hill and we pray for them. We pray for them on Facebook. We pray in the church, whatever it is. We pray and God will heal. And I'm going to, I'm going to, also, I'm going to also pray for the casting out of demonic spirits. John, you be careful because the devil's going to have your picture on every post, uh, telephone post in hell. I know he has. I know it's coming. But we're going to pray because he said you've got the power to do that. And he said this day in Luke chapter 4 and, and he, he promised that that was a fulfillment of 61 of Isaiah that this day 
I'm standing, it has arrived. He's here. And I've come to set you free out of your, your prison. That's what Jesus said. Now I hope that through the word of God, you can grow stronger and stronger and stronger. Don't expect you to have it all in one time. No, I don't. It's a growth process. Don't get discouraged if you don't have it all at one time, but I want to grow in it. I am, I am almost up to the high school, to junior high now, I'm telling you, but I'm going to grow. I want to see if there's one more man or one more woman here that will say, John, you can call me anything you want to. Look, I'm ready to with you. I'm going to grow and watch God move in the spirit. I want to see God move. Can I see your hand? I believe you. I really do. But now some of you are scared chicken. You got a back problem. It's a yellow streak down your spine. Don't worry about Dr. So-and-so. It doesn't matter about anybody. You concentrate on Jesus. Now, here we go. Now personally, <laughs> you say, well, yeah, but you're strong now. Look, I've got more of a broken back right now than I had one year ago in September. How do you do this? I don't know. I have no idea. I just said, Lord, when you want me to stop, lay me down in the floor. Let them all get around me and start administering first aid and whatever you call it, life support. Just don't anybody say, what? If it be thy will, Lord. But Lord, you know your will. He knows his will. And he sent his word. When you go to the 35th chapter of Isaiah and you hear the Lord coming, Isaiah prophesied. He said, but the year of the Lord is coming and the Lord will come. You read it yourself two or three times a day. And when the Lord Jesus comes, the Messiah comes, he's going to unstop deaf ears. He's going to open up blind eyes. And those that are crippled are going to be able to dance and sing and shout. He said, because when he comes, the lion's going to lie down and not take offense. And there's going to be peace and sickness and sorrow shall be no more, shall fade away. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so today. Now, I haven't ended it in a real big way or anything. I just want to ask you, do you really believe? He could, he could have. Will fail. <laughs> I want to say, I will. I want to hear you say it, come on, say it for him, come on. I will. One more time, come on, I will. Now, I want you, if you need a miracle from God and you'd like to grow whatever it is, okay, I want you to get on your feet right now and stand right where you are. Stand up on your feet. I need a miracle from God. You don't have to ask anybody. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to pay anything. Don't want anything, okay? Okay, we're going to pray right now. And um, I can't get y'all to move. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a song, I shall not be moved. We're going to have somebody to move towards you, okay? They may move by you and pray a prayer because I don't have much time. Um, Christine, I want you to come here and represent the people on, online today. Will you do that? I'm going to pray for you. You and I are going to pray, okay? Lenny, I want you to come here and you're going to represent the people in the parking lot, okay? You all are going to point your hand out and we're going to pray and believe God right now for everybody in this congregation. They're going to pass by you. They've been praying. Oh, I mean, they've been praying. And I mean, they've been praying that God is going to touch you and we believe God. Now, I want you to receive. You say, can you do that? I think you can. I want you to lay your hand on the place, if it's permissible, 
that you need healing, if it's a leg and so forth, okay, you can do it. Everybody's got his eyes closed right now, okay? Now I'm going to pray a prayer, and God is going to do it. In the name of Jesus, I want you to say it after me. Pray it with me. In the name of Jesus, I know you can. You can do it, Lord. You are able, Lord. Will you do it, Lord? Lord, I believe. Look at my faith. Look inside my soul. Restore me, O oh Lord. Let my faith begin to grow. Let me begin to mount up on wings. Touch me in this congregation. Lord, touch me in the parking lot right now. Oh Lord, touch me in the parking lot. Lord, I pray in my car that you will anoint me with the power of the Holy Spirit. And let me be healed, Lord, in your name. And if God is touching you, begin to blow your horn. Come on, all over the house, all over the yard, blow it. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, Lord, out there in the, in the world of the Facebook, where somebody's watching in Largo, Florida right now, Lord, heal her body and make her whole. Lord, where somebody's watching in Jamaica right now, Lord, in Haiti, in Dominican Republic, in, in Nicaragua, Lord, in Nigeria, Lord, in New York, Lord, in Western North Carolina, Lord, in Henderson, where my brother is right now, Lord, heal his body and make him whole in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. I want you to start saying it, Lord, I receive. It's your time to testify. Say it out loud, Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. Go ahead and say it out loud. Come on, Lord, I receive. Don't be afraid. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive from you. Now I want everybody here to put his hand out toward me because I'm gonna pray right now. And join me over here, y'all, okay? Step, step right this way, Christine. I'm calling the names out right now. You're gonna see how many are really hurting in this church right now. Have it. And I'm gonna call the names out right now. There are not one or two or 10, but these are in this church and they'd be here today. Wade Bird has um, a birthday today and I want God to give him a birthday gift. He's going back and forth to the hospital. Wade, I speak the word of truth to you right now in power. Be whole in Jesus' name. We will. He will. Hallelujah. Ted Hedgepath, I speak the word of faith to you right now. Be healed 110 miles away. Be loose from this thing. Let everything that is right, wrong, become right right now. Let your mind, your body, and everything flow together. Roland Horn in Lumberton, be healed in Jesus' name. I pray healing for you, sir. A miracle will happen to you, Roland. It's coming. Be loose from this thing. And God is going to do a miracle for you. And you're going to walk out of that hospital and be normal. And Barbara Morgan, Lord, give Barbara a healing touch today, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you for the word, no cancer. Make it complete, Lord. And Lord, for Marie Bullard, Lord, Lord, give her total healing, Lord. And I believe, Lord, right now where she's here, somebody reach out to Marie and touch her in Jesus' name. Be loose from it in Jesus' name. I see it right there. God bless you. Lord, speak a word to her right now, Lord. Be made whole. And Kim Wood. Mr. Eddie, Brother Eddie's wife. Lord, we speak to Kim right now, Lord. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be loose from it in the name of Jesus. And Betty Price, Dr. Price's wife, right now, Lord, touch Betty. And Lord, give her a total rebuilding of her soul, body, and mind in Jesus' name. Lord, for Zola Costello, heal her body. Lord, be near her right now, Lord, in the McDonald house or wherever it is, Lord. Lord, touch her, heal her, and make her whole, Lord. Lord, for Melvadell, who is in the nursing home, 
Mrs. Johan, be loose from this thing. Joe Norton at home this morning, be loose, be healed in Jesus' holy name. Dakota Davis, be loose from this thing right now, this accident. Come out of this coma in the name of Jesus. We speak to you in the coma, in the unseen world, and come out of it in Jesus' name. And Joanne Denton, Joanne, they've said, you're close, but now you're close to healing. And Lord, we lift our hands up right now, and we pray for you, Joanne. May you, your, your healing be your portion right now. Be loose from it. Come back from it. In Jesus' name, the COVID-19 and the pneumonia. And Lord, for Emily Wood, Pastor Eddie's sister in Raleigh, heal her body and make her whole. Loose her from this problem, Lord, of COVID-19. In Jesus' name. Lord, for Ruth Epler, Lord, you can put it all back together right now in Jesus' name. Lord, touch her body and make her whole. And Lord, for Judy Benton, Lord, we pray a healing touch upon her right now. Lord, let her mind and body work together in Jesus' name. And Lord, I know that we've got plenty of them that I haven't mentioned. And I've got them, can I have the list? You gotta come, 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 come. Come on up with me, uh, Pastor, come up with me, okay. Healing's going out right now to people on this list right now. Norman Christopher Richard, Janice Brown's grandson right now. Richard's son, isn't that right, Janice? It's Richard's son, isn't it? Touch that boy and heal him in the name of Jesus, that man. Lord, Lord, bring these out of the coma. And Lord, for Verdi and Gloria and Cynthia and Todd Kahneman and Inga Franklin and Carolyn Grant, Lord, heal her body, Lord, and make hold if she's here. Be touched in Jesus' name. And Betty Guy. And Johnny, I get a chance to pray for Johnny Johnson, my friend from my hometown be loose from this thing and healed in the name of Jesus. Glory. And Fred Parker and Bernice Perry and her husband, I call him my little admiral, be loose from it right now in Jesus' name. Brother Bernie Perry, be healed in Jesus' name. Be loose from this sickness in Jesus' holy name. For Philip Poquette, for Larry Rayner, for Ruby Russ, Lord, for many others. And Lord, I pray for every one of them here. For Nancy Stanley, for Rose Strickland, for Kay Wilburn, for Harvey Montague, my daughter's stepfather or father-in-law. Be loose from it. And Lord, for cancer, Lord, all the way down the line, I lay my hands on this, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you'll heal in Jesus' name. You will heal, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we look for the miracle. I want to ask you one more time here because the choir is going to sing and, and you're going to worship. You're going to speak to somebody. I'm so thrilled to have you in the church today. Some new ones that have been coming for quite a while I got a chance to meet during the fire drill, during the prayer time. I want you to come when you will and be with us in that prayer service at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning to get ready for the service here because we hadn't got enough time to waste, folks. Look, we gotta make time count, haven't we? Bring the sick with you. We're just beginning. I'm glad I'm here. I wanna tell you this. I mean, I love all the churches, but today I'm glad I'm a Pentecostal. <laughs> but I wanna go farther than they go because sometimes they don't go enough for me. Listen, and I've said it, and listen, I want them to be able to go with us into the world of the unknown into the world of the Spirit and let go and let God. Now I want every person in the house today to show me faith. Come on, to God. I want to know that you're with me on it. Are you with me on the praying? Do you believe God can do it? Mark Maynard, do you believe God can do it? Do you believe it over there? Do you believe it, my great brother Wheatley, Ms. Wheatley? We go back a long way. We go all, all the way back to Terry Sanford Senior High. Oh, praise God. When you were the teacher, no, I was the teacher and you were the student. 
Oh, praise God. Look, look, folks. Bring somebody with you. Now, put your hand up if God has touched you. And I want you to say it. I'm a child of God. Will you do it? I'm a child of God. Everything God has, I have. Everything I have, He has. Jack, get him, get him, bring him back, okay? Somebody bring him back. I mean, we're off the air now, maybe anyway, but uh, I'm coming on for the real stuff now, okay? Praise God, I'm just kidding. I want you to just say it to him. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the King. My father's rich. I believe God. A healing portion is for me. You believe that? I believe it with all my heart. Hallelujah.